Welcome back to the Paranorm Girl podcast. I am your host, Kristen. My listeners are in for an awesome show today. Investigator, researcher, and author of Sasquatch, Evidence of an Enigma 1, 2, and 3, Carter Bouchard joins us momentarily. We dig into a side of the Bigfoot phenomenon, which I've been very much looking forward to looking at. A far more strange and inexplicable side to the story. And what a storyteller Carter is. Y'all are in for a treat. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Manscaped. The season for a fresh cut is here with the sponsors of today's show, Manscaped. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming have launched their fifth-generation lawnmower to help you avoid another silent night in the bedroom. Take care of your special snowflake with Manscaped and watch your South Pole shine like never before. Get the best stocking stuffer of all by going to manscaped.com and using code PNG for 20% off plus free shipping. Mrs. Claus, well, thank you. Thanks to my partnership with Manscaped, I have personally enjoyed using all of the products that they have sent me this past year. I don't just say that I use them. I regularly use them because I like how good they are. I appreciate the humor involved. I love how good I feel, how good Lee feels as a result of working with these products. I completely understand, though, how hard it can be to swap out the old for something entirely new. But I have spent this year testing the trimmers, trying the formulas, and relaying to listeners the results and my personal opinions. If I didn't think people would love using Manscaped as much as I do. I really wouldn't be so passionate and creative about it. That's just the truth. I'm an Aries. We're, we're built different, okay? So look it. To borrow from my last guest, Steve Janier, look it. <laughs> Every name on your Christmas list could probably use a little something special that you've heard me talk about on this show. You can zero in, be direct about it, and to the point, hand the hairiest nose in the room their very own Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer. The scruffiest of the bunch? Look no further than Manscaped's Beard Hedger Pro Kit. It comes with all of the essentials he could possibly need, such as beard shampoo and conditioner, or a boar bristled brush for that salon-like treatment from the comfort of his own home. Or stuff someone's stocking with the Shears 3.0 nail grooming kit. Hands down. Get it? Hands down. <laughs> the best clippers that I have ever used comes in this kit. Okay? Anyone in the fam about to qualify for Guinness Book of World Records because they've been letting them nails slide for far too long? This compact kit is stylish, perfect for on the go, and it comes equipped with the tools to rid them of all of their phalange sorrows. Remember, Christmas is almost here, but there is still time. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code PNG at manscaped.com. That is 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com when you use code PNG. Say ho, ho, ho to a well-groomed mistletoe or ears or face or hands with Manscaped. My guest is a true boots-on-the-ground Sasquatch investigator. He has published nearly 100 reports of encounters and sightings, interviewed over 400 witnesses and counting, and he worked with BFRO for many years. His longtime special interests in this field include Sasquatch habituation, burial research, infrasound, language, and stick structures. 
You can learn all about his research, investigations, evidence, and his ongoing work with families who are experiencing visitation and habituation in his book, Sasquatch, Evidence of an Enigma, 1, 2, and 3. Please enjoy my conversation with Carter Bouchard. I am so pleased, beyond pleased, to welcome Carter Bouchard to the show. Thank you so much for joining me, Carter. Thanks, Kristen. Glad to be here. And I guess that hundred bucks I sent you every week uh, got me that really cool intro. So cool. It's worth it. It, it pays off. It pays yeah, off it to be friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I am just oh so excited to talk with you today. We had our little pre-recording discussion, kind of where where I'm at, and uh, I'm very new to a lot of the things we'll be discussing today, uh, and I just can't wait to pick your brain. But uh, to start it out, you are new to the show. You're new to my audience. Uh, would you just give us uh, the synopsis, the intro, the, the bio? Who is Carter? Well, uh Carter Bouchard, I live in Liberty, Missouri. Uh, I've been researching uh, since 2011, 10, 11, somewhere in there. Uh, I've led four expeditions for BFRO. I've had uh, right at 100 reports published to BFRO. That's not turned in. They're actually, you can look them up and they're, they're there, you know. And okay. so uh, I, uh, I consulted on two of the Finding uh, Bigfoot TV shows, one in Kansas and one in Missouri. And both of those shows had some of my published reports on them. You know, the, the witnesses were actually on the show. So uh, I, I started out uh, as not knowing what they were or were not. I just, I, uh, I saw the first Sasquatch TV show uh, in search of with Leonard Nimoy, which showed the Patty film back in, I don't know, the 70s. Whenever that show came on, I was hooked. I saw it. Oh, my God. You know, yeah. Yeah. I just knew that was a real creature. I can't tell you why. You know, I, I could tell you why, but it's a whole other story. Uh, but it, it was it got me in there. So my wife and I went on vacation to Washington State, and this is how I knew it was supposed to happen. Uh, so we uh, we went there and went just out into the woods, you know, heavy, heavy, deep, deep, deep woods. And this was the first year that Washington State had passed the marijuana laws. Mm -hmm. So you could smoke pot and do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but they were chasing a lot of the growers out of the national forest there. Right. And so I found, I had to go behind a tree to take a leak. I found a large ammo box chained to this tree. I'm thinking, oh God, I found somebody's stash. Uh, I better find another place uh, to relieve myself. But I, I, I had to go. So I, I relieved myself and I decided, you know, I'm going to see what's inside this box. And so I, I thought it was a booby trap because you hear all the stories about being a booby trap box. So I took a limb and I'm left-handed. So I took my right hand and was trying to open the thing. Finally got it open. Long story short, uh, I found a car, a business car. You know what, you know what the geocache is? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. This was a geocache stash. Wow. It was not anything drug related. It was geocache. Oh, I just happened to accidentally stumble on it. So yeah. inside, you know, that's where you take something of yours and leave it and you sign the book and then you take something that's in there and take it with you. Mm -hmm. I found a card for a BFRO investigator from Washington state. I said, this is supposed to happen because I have been wanting to get on an expedition or find out how to become an investigator. Mm -hmm. So uh, long, I, I call a guy, I got hooked up with the guys here in Missouri and went on a couple of expeditions, became a researcher, became an investigator, started getting my stuff published. They fired the guy who was doing the, uh, expeditions for him here in Missouri and hired me. And so oh. that's, that's how I got baptized, you know, okay. into the okay. Sasquatch world. I said, I'm in, I'm in, it's cool. This is great. <laughs> you know, running around the woods, chasing, you know, a, a, you know, a, a, a hominid, a, a gorilla, a relative of man, whatever it was, I, I was in heaven. It was awesome. You know? Wow. Well, well, uh 
Oh gosh, I have a couple of questions. One, what is uh, what is like getting into BFRO like? Is there a lot of like training involved? Is there an initiation process? There is. You just have to have you know. I, and I had, as a researcher, investigator, and expedition leader, I had a lot of people that came to me wanting to know how to get into BFRO. So okay. what you have to have some common sense. You can't get discouraged or uh, easily, you know, and you have to have some smarts. You do, you just have to have some smarts and logic, you know, that yeah. that was really it. And I had an early aptitude for this stuff. I was casting prints and, you know, uh, didn't even take a year. I was leading expeditions, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, I led three here in Missouri and one in Illinois in uh, 2019. And that's the last one I did probably won't be doing okay. any more for them, you know? So, but you know, and, and the more I talked to people, because when you go onto the flats, that's what they call it. You go onto the web page and you see reports in your area. I do uh, Arkansas, Oklahoma, um, Kansas, and Missouri. Those are my four states because I can mm -hmm. get to anyone within an hour and a half from my house. So those are the ones I did reports with. But the more I started talking to people, the more they were, you know, they were telling me their story. I saw one, I was driving down the highway, I ran across the road, the most road, 50% of all Sasquatch reports are road crossing. So mm -hmm. I, you know, that was cool. That's cool. They're, they're all still cool. But then they would say, now, some of people would go, I got to tell you something you probably won't believe. And so I'm going, well, you just told me about a creature that doesn't exist. And now you want to tell me something <laughs> I won't believe. So let's go. <laughs> you know, what, do, what do you got? You know, and then the paranormal quantum things came in. Right. And they were mortified even telling me because they're so used to being scoffed at and ridiculed, you know, uh, yeah. by friends, family, spouses, coworkers. I mean, you know, oh, right, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Let's have you over to the Christmas party. Tell us your story. It would be a, it'd be a fun time. You know, have some eggnog. Let's make fun. <laughs> but, you know, but, but it got me to thinking, you know, because the guys that brought me in the BFRO here in Missouri, were dyed in the wool, ape only, right. hateful ape only type people. If you believe anything other than what they believe, you're done. You're an idiot. Yeah. You, to, you know that. I mean, it was it's really hateful and nasty. Yeah. You know, and and I'm like I said, I'm all for having difference of opinions, but it's just you know they were nasty about it. Well, my first expedition I led, I saw one disappear on my thermal camera, I was watching it and it didn't know we were there. It came around a corner. I was sitting there with my camera and an, another group of guys mm -hmm. and it just it exploded like a flashbulb at night. It, it took one step. I'm looking at it. I'm going, Oh my God. And then boom, it disappeared and vanished. You know, I wasn't stoned. I wasn't drunk. I have top of the line FLIR equipment. Uh, I'm not on any kind of, you know, uh, psychotropic drugs for, you know, mental illnesses or anything like that. Uh, this just flat out happened. And so I quickly took the road less traveled from that day on because it told me that there is something going on that is not explainable by flesh and blood only. Okay. So that, that was the, like the instigating event that just set you on this, this new course. Yeah. 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 And you're absolutely right. That is the road less traveled. Like even I, I am new to this subject. I, I've been studying Sasquatch at this level for three months, but from the start, it became very clear, abundantly clear to me that there are these two separate camps. One is the flesh and blood ape that is it. It's biology. It's explainable, even though we're talking about Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. And the other is this other thing. And I haven't gotten into that research yet. So like I was telling you, I'm so excited to talk to you about it because they're coming from a paranormal perspective, which I am like, I, I give credence to a lot of these subjects. I know that there is something kind of unexplainable going on in general, I know that I have had things, crazy things yeah. happen to me that I can't explain. So how, who am I to say that, okay, you know, just flesh and blood, just biology. And that is it for this phenomenon. When all these people are telling these other stories, these strange uh -huh. and unexplainable things that are happening to them. And you do give a nod to that in, uh, in your book. I picked up number one, uh, Sasquatch evidence of an enigma. You've written one, two, 
and three. I cannot wait to grab two and three, but uh, it's, yeah, outstanding book. You're a great writer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about the sure. books. Um, why, uh, why and when did you write these? Uh, well, uh, I had just discovered <clears throat> uh, that all this other stuff was going on. And so I decided to write a book and it, it's only because I had like a hundred reports published. I don't know. There's probably other researchers that had that many, but I, they're published. And half of those people told me things they didn't want in their report because they didn't want to be laughed at because a lot of them have their name, phone number, email address, and all that stuff. So, um, I, 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 I obfuscated their names and locations and we just told the stories. Uh, but, uh, I started writing the books around 19, uh, excuse me, uh, 2020 and COVID hit. And so we weren't doing expeditions. I couldn't go anywhere. I mean, you really couldn't do much, you know, you're just kind of trapped. So, I wrote one and then halfway through the first one, I got wind of my reports and others being tampered with on BFRO website. Oh no. Yeah, oh, no. no. Uh, they, they, uh, they sanitized the reports. One of oh. mine had uh, any reference to intellect taken out of it. And the oh. way I found out was my witness called me all ticked off. Carter, this isn't my report because I saw his report published and I knew what I wrote. I didn't read it, you know, once I turned it in and it was published mm -hmm. because I had no idea they would be doing this kind of thing. And so he was irate. He was ticked off and I read it and I went, oh my God, Nick, God, they did. What the heck? What are they doing? You know, and the thing was they took the references to intellect out of there and published it anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just stupid. So, but they, they did that to about, oh, half a dozen of my reports. And there's many, many, many other researchers that will tell you the same thing. You know, as long as you don't use their name, I'm telling you, cause I don't care anymore. You know, uh, I don't do reports for them anymore and uh, I never will because they're lying. They're telling falsehoods about what's really going on. And so the, the number one BFR, the, the number one database for Sasquatch sightings is tainted. You don't know what's real and what's not. Yeah. You know? Oh, that is, that's really disappointing. Yeah. Um, if you talk to other people, I don't mean to interrupt, but if you talk to other researchers, mm -hmm. uh, they will tell you with the probably you promising anonymity, you know, because I, I know a lot of guys, they just won't even turn in the stuff anymore because they know what yeah. happens to it. it goes down the toilet. Yeah. And what, what a weird, thing to sanitize too, just just the 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 idea of intellect or intelligence because i i thought that was just kind of understood about this creature you know well yeah and see you know ron moorhead you're familiar with his work oh yeah oh yeah you know the sierra sounds mm -hmm. i mean class act guy good guy he did commentary in my first book he's a he's a friend mm -hmm. and he caught grief for his stance. He still does, you know, from the ape only crowd. But, you know, you listen to those tapes and I've heard stuff. I've heard vocalizations. I've heard conversations. I've got people calling me They're listening to two and three Sasquatch chattering back and forth amongst each other on their property. I mean, hmm. you know, and, and I can't pick up the phone and just call a hundred people and they all happen to be nuts. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, the odds of that happening aren't that great. So I'm, I'm getting everyday people like you and I having these incredible events. And that's why I got into the habituation. Uh, and that's the one I'm working on now. It's taking a while to get it out there, but the, the people that have these beings living on their property for anywhere from a year to mm -hmm. 25 years, spanning wow. a couple of generations of the same family. Okay. Okay. They interact with them. They show them their babies. They watch them work in the field. Mm -hmm. They I've had, I've sat on the porch with one of my witnesses and had my name in uh yell thrown right back at me. It was <laughs> identical. It was my voice. They can mimic anything. So when you sit there and you're absorbing all this with, 
these witnesses and they go, oh yeah, that's probably the mother right there. She, she's got a kind of a whiny boy. I mean, they don't even think about, you know, I, I won't talk to these people, but every five or six months they'll call or, you know, message me and they'll say, hey, what's been going on? Oh, not much. What's been going on with you? Well, you know, uh, we got another car and, you know, uh, I broke my little finger and have, uh, Oh, uh, Sasquatch uh, showed me its baby uh, about a month ago. Did I tell you that? <laughs> they don't even think about it. You know what I mean? It's like an everyday thing. They're yeah. used to it and they live and breathe it. You know, they interact on occasion, mm -hmm. but they're, they're usually watching them behind trees. They're watching them mow the yard on the big tractor and make a noise and, you know, uh, gifting and all this stuff. I mean, and people just can't grasp that. You know, and that's not even paranormal. That's just a day in the life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I and I would say, yeah, it's not paranormal, but I would say that that is a stranger side or like activity of Bigfoot that you don't often hear in the, the regular schmegular reports. You know, no. you don't often hear that. So it does come off sometimes like, oh, that's 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 that other stuff. Look, look, look at the Look at this instead. You know, yeah. it's kind of the stuff that they they don't want to talk about like like i i did a, a little blurb on uh, uh janice carter yes yeah. name yeah well-known habituation 50 case. years of, 50 years of bigfoot yeah and that spanned over generations as well and it's it's yeah. uh an incredible story yeah um but yeah and i so you you specialize in habituation cases is that right yeah i have uh eight or nine properties that i monitor and mm -hmm. so they'll call me uh, with updates every now and then a couple of them have become very, very, very good friends. You know, yeah. I mean, I count them as friends and the, the, the things they're telling are just, they're mind boggling if you're not a student of this, but mm -hmm. people don't understand that. Well, I, I saw a Sasquatch. I was out cutting wood and I saw, I think it was a Sasquatch. It might've been a bear. But I think it was a Sasquatch. Well, they're watching you work. They're fascinated with us humans. They don't like us because we're, poisoning the planet and that's part of the reason they're interacting because they're trying to get us to treat each other nicer treat the world nicer treat the planet nicer no recreational hunting if you got to feed your family we get it but you know if you're going to go out and just you know kill a buck just to cut the head off and stick it on your wall and the meat just goes back you know they are genuinely irritated with that kind of behavior they're here to teach us how to treat each other Mm -hmm. And that treats the planet, you know, what sounds all hippy dippy and oh yeah, man, I, I dig it. <laughs> That's not what it's, it's not that, you know, it's, it's a real philosophy. I've heard them say things to me, uh, telepathically and I've got people that are telling me and it's just, it's happening. It's just something is just unseen. It's like the, it's like the elephant in the room that nobody sees. It's the, it's a crazy uncle. Nobody wants to have over for holidays, you know, uh, <laughs> but, but it's, it's just, it, it's real. I, I, you know, I could talk to you for about three hours now. I wouldn't even be half done, you know, I mean, because the stuff that is going on, you know, yeah, yeah. and I'm still getting a call or two a month or an email. Hey, I heard you on a podcast. Right. Someone told right. me about your book. You're okay to talk to. You're not going to embarrass me, you know. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I've talked to so many people and I say, what I'm going to do, we're going to try to figure out what you saw. If it's just like cut and dried and it was what it is, good. But if it's, you know, we'll, we'll cover all the possibilities. And if we still don't have an answer, then you got something, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. You know, but I, I'm not sitting there going, oh, you're nuts. You must have been smoking the good stuff, you know, or yeah. how those gummies doing for you, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not one of those guys because I, I believe it's happened to me, you know, and my wife has been with me mm -hmm. as a skeptic who is no longer a skeptic, you know. I She's her, experienced too, too oh, much. Too. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. I took her to one of my research areas here in uh, uh, Missouri, and, uh, you know, it was, it was a friendly dissing, you know. I have, you know, photos and uh, 
reports on my desk and she'll come in every now and then and go, oh, I'm glad you got a little hobby there, hubby. You know, go, <laughs> don't you do that. You know, don't, you, don't patronize me, you know, uh, friendly wise, of course. Yeah. So I'll tell you, and she's an old Nebraska farm girl. So I said, I'll tell you what, let's, let's go to one of my research areas. And she, she's not afraid to pop a squat. She, you know, pull, she used to pull heads off of chickens and butcher them for eating. I mean, she, she's a farm girl, so she's not a girly girl. So she went camping and got her hands dirty and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, you want me to tell you the story? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, one of my research areas is in Ellington, Missouri. It's, it's it's deep, deep, deep in the Mark Twain National Forest. It's just full of Sasquatch, and so uh, I and this research area I took her to was the area I was at when I saw that one vanish on my thermal camera. It became one of my research areas. Mm-hmm. And a really good witness who became a friend of mine, he just passed away here about a month ago. Uh, he had a class A sighting uh, when he was up in a blind, very near where this Sasquatch vanished, and they stared at each other. And he saw him, and, and uh, Tommy uh, at the time had his uh, bow, didn't have his gun, he had a bow. And he was slowly trying to pull the thing back because he wasn't sure if he's going to have to shoot her or not. And the first thing he told me was, Carter, I, I couldn't do it. It was too human. It was too human looking. I, I, I couldn't do it if I wanted to. You hear that so much. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's a religious man. He was a preacher. Mm-hmm. I, I called him Pre- Preacher Tom. That's how, that's how I have him in my phone, actually. And uh, he just passed away here a while back. But I went on, oh. I went squatching with him several times. And he had three Class A reports visual sightings and Sasquatch trying to take their kill from them that they had strung up on a tree, a hog and a deer, and they gutted them. And they come to find out they were really after the gut piles because that's what they wanted. That's the higher protein. That's where the good stuff is. Yeah. 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 And so, but anyway, uh, that became my research area. So uh, I took my wife there and uh, we parked, camped, had dinner, I took her uh, to say, well, I had to go to this area 14 is what I call it. It's area 14. Mm-hmm. And so, um, we went, we parked my uh, SUV. We had, you can't drive down these little ravines anymore. They're really, really treacherous. Not even, they don't even allow four wheeler traffic because they were rescuing too many people on the jagged rocks. You right. know, the conservation department's not in the business of towing you out, you know? So there's a big gate. That you can't drive a vehicle down there. So we parked there, I backed my SUV up, we started walking down, and within like five minutes, she's going, Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm free. And it, she wasn't being like a girly girly, and I'm scared of the dark. I felt what she was feeling, but I know they're there. I know I'm in their living room. This is where they live. This is an area that they live in in this conservation area. She I, was, I, I, she was freaked because she felt watched or what was the feeling? Yeah. Yeah. She's feeling watched, got the heebie jeebies, the hair on the back of her neck was standing up and okay. you know, she just knew there was something there. I said, uh, I understand what you're feeling. I feel it too, but I, I know this is their home. They're not going to do anything. You know, we'd be, <laughs> if they're going to do something, we'd be gone already. So trust me. So we, we kept walking. And she kept going, I, I'm done. Don't go another step. I, you know, we had about a hundred yards, 75 to hundred yards to go to get down to the bottom of this ravine and to take the right turn, which is where the Sasquatch that took that right turn disappeared when it came and saw me. So she's freaking and wants to go back. And I said, no, uh, she's give me the keys. I said, no, I'm not giving you the keys. Cause I want to take you to their area. I mean, you're going to experience something. I just know because I can already tell because we are. And so she said, I'm, I'm heading back. I said, no, look, the car's too far up that hill. I shine my light up there where my car was parked. Mm-hmm. It wasn't there. It was gone. I'm going, where the hell's my car? And she's going, what do you mean? You're, you're shining your light right on it. I'm shining the light and I'm going, where's my car? And she goes, don't jack with me. I'm already freaked out. So I want to get out of here. So I say, no, look, we're just going down here to the bottom of the, the ravine. And I shine my light to where we were going. Mm-hmm. There was my car. I'm going, how did my car get down there? And she's going, I told you, quit messing with me. I, look, this is bad enough. Quit jacking with me. I said, I'm not. I, there's my car. 
I'm seeing it. It clears day and she's not seeing it as clear as day. I shine it back up to where it was. It wasn't there. I said, see, it's not there. You know, blankety blank, dirty word, dirty word, dirty word. You know, it, it's there. Your car is there. I said, no, it's not. You know, this went on two, three, four times. And then finally, uh, I shined it back up to where it was. Mm -hmm. And there it was. And it was back. Yeah. How, how, what, what have your thoughts on that? What do you well, think uh, happened? Telepathy. They can make you, you know, with infrasound, you know, if you're familiar with infrasound, that's a, a little bit. Of, I, I definitely want to ask you about that because you, yeah, you come that's, in. That's a range that. of sound that is above or below uh, the range of human hearing and perception. You know, same with okay. eyesight. You know, okay. it's 20 hertz uh, to 20 kilohertz is a range. That, that's our that's our prisoner range. We can only hear in those ranges. Right. right. And you, you get into the uh, eyesight, uh, night vision. It's the same type of thing. You can only see certain ranges because mm -hmm. of the way our eyes are designed, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, there was my car and I went, what the blank? And I went, you guys, you jacking with me. You guys are jacking with me. I know <laughs> now I know what you're doing. I was sitting there just, just going, you guys are messing with me. And so I went there to show her, and they ended up showing me, <laughs> you know? So not only did I have that one vanish at that area, mm -hmm. now they're messing with my head, either mental telepathy or some type of infrasound. Uh, and we call it zapping. Oh, okay. Or the, you know, if you hear somebody say they got zapped, Mm -hmm. It's probably due to infrasound where you can be paralyzed. I don't know if you know how infrasound works, but, you know, uh, they use it in uh, uh, Europe a lot to uh, quiet the riots and they shoot sound cannons and it make it tears your guts up. It gives you horrible pains. You're doubled over and all the rioters disperse, you know, so, well, right. that. you know, but they have the ability to create sound or paralyze you or mm -hmm. make you see things mm -hmm. you, you yeah, hear I've... a lot of stories about deer in a wide open area in the middle of the woods running amok they're all running in circles well the sasquatch are after them and they're hitting them with infrasound so they're zapping them and they're they're confused they don't know where to go and they're confused and you know you know and, and so that's how they run them down and you know snap their necks break their back legs and boom dinner is served no. Oh, yeah, that's, that's how that's how I've come across that term before, because they're they're uh, predators, just like yeah. just like cougars yeah. and stuff. I'm not sure which predators, but yeah, they, they use well, they're them. omnivores. They eat anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Okay. Because they can. <laughs> they're, they're the big badass. You know, they can <laughs> they can eat whatever they want, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, the apex predator out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're it. You know, maybe you know, maybe a big uh, you know Kodiak or brown bear might give them a good fight, but uh, I don't know. I'd still put my money on Sasquatch. But anyway, so that's that's just one event. But okay. that told me that not only do they have the skill set to make themselves vanish, and they do it in broad daylight as well. Mm -hmm. You know, many people report them walking into a tree and not coming out the other side. And no, they didn't disappear behind it. Hmm. They just went in, did not come out. That's uh, like like dematerialization. Yeah, they, slipping into they, a portal, uh, portal perhaps, or okay. another dimension. Okay. Well, they're not really disappearing. They have the they have the ability to change their vibrational frequency. We all have a vibrational frequency. They can mm -hmm. change that just enough so you're looking right at it, and all of a sudden, it's gone. It might still be there. You just aren't seeing it because they've changed their frequency. So outside your uh, your boundaries of perception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Good term. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's it. So there's two examples, you know, you know, and and you know, I've got just ask me questions. I mean, just okay. well, how 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 it, based on just what you know, you've investigated, you've heard if you had to break it down into percentage wise, how many stories would be your, like your standard 
Bigfoot experience versus uh, something a bit more paranormal. Like there, there's just something that you you wouldn't ordinarily expect to hear, but mm -hmm. it's there. You know, how, how would you divvy that up? Well, it's come up. Right now, I'd say it's in the 30 to 35 percent are, wow. are going to be paranormal or quantum-based uh, analogies of what someone saw that they just can't explain. Okay. And okay. then, you know, it it was 80-20, but it's, the tide is changing because, you know, as we were talking before the show, you cannot explain many things that people are saying and the same people are saying the same things all across the board there's not just you know fifty thousand nut cases that became nuts as soon as they saw a sasquatch mm -hmm. and they're just spouting all this bizarre stuff they're seeing things that act like i just described for me that actually happened and so what do you do with that you know uh, it, it happens and you know you go to bob and carol and ted and Ramona next door, and they might have the same story, but, but just a slightly different version, different location. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, I've heard them call my name. I've got several uh, habituation property people. They call the wife's name when the wives are outside working during the day while the husbands are gone to work, and it sounds just like their husband's voice. Huh. They won't even call them at work. Are you here? Are, are you out here? <laughs> I thought you were at work. You just call my name. And it, they use the little uh, love nicknames like honey mm -hmm. or, you know, Sin Sin. I got a witness, her name is Cindy, and her hubby calls her Sin Sin. Mm -hmm. Why? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe something that happened on the first day. I don't know. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's almost comical. But they know it now. And when, you know, so now when she's out working in the garden, you know, and, and, and one of the uh, Sasquatch that's calling her by her name when her, with her husband's voice is a young female. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, and she sees her, you know, and she knows it's her calling, mm -hmm. but it, it's in his voice. And they're just messing with you. <laughs> is that, is that? Is that usual for them to be kind of like mischievous like that? Oh gosh, they got a heck of a sense of humor. <laughs> oh, they do. Oh gosh, yes. They yeah. have they have awesome senses of humor, you know. And uh, uh, this isn't. Uh, I've got another really good story if you want. Unless you got questions. Yeah. No, how, long, no. how long are we on for? Uh, you know, we can go as long as you have, as long as you want. I am thoroughly enjoying this, and I, I love a good story. So yeah. I'll, I'll just follow your lead. Yes, please tell us. Well, here's one about understanding human nature. Okay. And I think this is a really awesome uh, event. So I've got a, a witness family uh, out in uh, Pacific Northwest. I'll try not to identify them because, uh, anyway, uh, they're in their late 60s, early 70s, they have an adult son who is 50. He's on the spectrum. He's lived with them his entire life. Mm -hmm. And he, but he's, he knows what's going on, you know, and they, they know about the Sasquatch. And But she has this incredible gifting thing going on with the Sasquatch people. Out there. Oh, it okay. just blows your mind, the stuff that they're doing back and forth. But here, uh, when they first bought this property, they discovered that they, they had Sasquatch out there. A couple of neighbors whispered it, but they just didn't want to say it out loud. But then they started seeing and hearing things and went, mm, you know, the structures and stuff like that. And so, long story short, they're well aware and were when this stuff happened. So um, she goes out and they grow a lot of their vegetables and fruit. Uh, mm -hmm in the Pacific Northwest there. So uh, apples and plums. Well, uh, one day she went out and they were going to pick the plums. The plums were all picked off the trees. Not a seed left. Half the apple tree was stripped from the top down to the middle. So we're talking about 12, 13 feet in the air. Yeah, yeah. All the way down to middle. 
were stripped. She got pissed. She just, she went off and said, you guys, this is how we eat and feed our family. You can't be taking our food. She was just going off on them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, the next day they, uh, now her son, the, the one on the spectrum, they have this little fountain that's down near this gifting area. It's one of those fountains you can buy like Lowe's or Home Depot. It's like a little koi pond, you know, mm -hmm. it's got a little bubbly, it's got a little pump and the water's always kind of flowing through there. Uh, he went down there to, uh, mess around with the, the foliage around there, you know, to trim some trees and do some stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's a rabbit in the pond with his head pulled off. That's how they, you know, with rabbits and turtles, they just pop the head off. Frogs, they, you know, they just pop the head off. And, right, right. Yeah. It was half stripped of fur, washed, and left in the pond. And that <sighs> was, I'm sorry. Right. They took that as a gift mm -hmm. because they just got their butts ripped for taking all their plums. The next day, there was about a six inch perch also in the pond. There's not a Creek anywhere near there. I mean, I, I'm talking about a little koi pond. You know how yeah. big they are. They're, they're yeah. three foot by two foot. Oh yeah. There's no, where, where'd this perch come from? <laughs> and her husband at the time was agnostic. He did not believe in Sasquatch. He thought she was nuts mm -hmm. because he was gone at work all the time. And she was freaking out because she was there alone and hearing things, you know? So, there's a six inch perch mm -hmm. still alive, swimming around in this pond. How the hell did that get there? Well, I know how that happened. You know, one of these uh, egrets was flying over the trees and it took it out of the, uh, one of the creeks and dropped it and it <laughs> fell a hundred feet into the pond. That has to be how it got there. The egrets got some good aim. <laughs> yeah. Come on, pal. You know, he's since been baptized. So, but oh, okay. this was an example mm -hmm. and you can only draw the conclusion because you try all the other things where would this fish have come from where would this headless rabbit have come mm -hmm. from where the head just popped off you know right right and washed and clean it's an offering it's a peace offering so was the fish it was an offering now they had they probably had to go 50 to 100 yards to these little creeks that are in there. They have some kind of uh, oh, uh, marshland mm -hmm. at the back of one of their properties, but you'd have to go catch it and bring it, put it in there because there's no way it's going to fall into this little pond. It's about the size of my desk. Right. So right. That was their well, first clue. The wife's clue anyway, mm -hmm. that she is interacting with intelligent beings that have a sense of right and wrong. Okay. And okay. by the way, since then, they have an agreement. They only take half of the fruit off the plum and the apple trees. They Do take they... it top down uh -huh. and leave it for my family from the middle to the bottom. Okay. Do, do they still swap for uh, swap something in for what, what they do take? No, no. They okay. got the one time apology. Okay. <laughs> You know, well, uh, you know, the thing was, you could take it. They told him you could take half. You take yeah. half. Okay. You leave the other half for us because we're not selling it. We're, 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 we're canning it and doing whatever. Right. So that was, it, it, and they understood that verbiage. They understood what was being sent either, uh, either by verbal or body language and histronics. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and this happens to other people too, other families. I mean, it's just, you know. Well, is, is gifting the, the, the concept of gifting, is that, is that primarily a, a habituation activity that, that yeah, only occurs yeah. with habituation? Mostly. Uh, now, if you, you know, and it is, uh, I will do it every now and then if I'm going to be in an area two or three days, mm -hmm. I don't have time to wait around, you know, but I, I know they know me. And if they're in the area or since that I'm there, they may come and, you know, throw a rock at me or, you know, uh, throw a, a, a turtle shell at me or, you know, pine cones is a, a, a favorite projectile to get tossed at you, you know, 
but you know uh, that is traditional uh, habituation thing where you're gifting you know uh, and they really love human food so if you can gift them human food like apples bags of apples are a big mm-hmm. deal oranges they don't really like because it's kind of bitter uh, bananas they love hot dogs uh, yeah, yeah. Peanut butter. butter. The 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 story you have in the book of the peanut butter that was yeah. that's a crazy story. It's so yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, but it's real. And researchers use that all the time. I mean, if you if you study it at all, I know you do. I mean, you'll see that the things I'm talking about are traditionally done uh, with researchers and habituation folks. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to get into the habit of feeding them. Like a lot of people go out and take all the table scraps. You know, like. You know, roasted chicken and steak and beets and baked potatoes and whatever's out there. And, you know, they get addicted to that stuff and they get really ticked off if you quit. And they'll come slap on your house or growl or throw you know, rocks and tree limbs on top of your roof and say, hey, where's my food? Is is that uh, is that what how, I was looking at some of the photos you shared? I don't know if you want to talk about those yet. Um, you shared an interesting photo of a handprint. Yeah, that goes with a. Uh, which handprint is that? The hand photo the, on the, the camera. The hand by the door. Okay, that that goes with the face I sent you. Okay. And do you, do the, you want me to pop that up here and we can? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a oh, that is an awesome story as well. All right. Yeah. Let's look at this guy. Okay. Yeah. What's the so, story behind this? My family, uh, they have uh, a semi-large farming operation. They grow uh, their own food, but they also grow to sell at farmers markets because that's how they make their income. Okay. Uh, so uh, a good portion of their income. So they have, uh, you, you see that plastic, it's that loose sheet plastic. That, yeah. Uh, it comes in those big, big rolls. It's really heavy duty plastic, you know, but it's still pliable. Right. And uh, they have these, you know what a Quonset hood is? I, I'm of, not familiar, huh? A Quonset hood is kind of the military buildings that are kind of arched, curved like this. Oh, okay. okay. They're like, they call them Quonset huts. They're usually made out of metal. But yeah. they just have metal frames and they stretch the plastic over it and they grow their food inside Okay. And, to keep it from the predators and the elements. And on this particular property, there's another one just like this building right next to it. And there's about a five foot space in between. In between those two, they have a uh, propane heater, mm-hmm. kind of a propane furnace, and they run a pipe into each a Quonset hut to keep the food from freezing in the winter. And so you can see uh, a lot of the lines and stuff in there is uh, moisture. Mm -hmm. So uh, that handprint is left by a juvenile that puts his face up to the plastic and he puts his hands up, leaning on it, looking out, to see if any humans are coming before he leaves with all the food. That's the, that's the juvenile, that, that guy there, he's probably bigger now, uh, six and a half feet tall is what they estimate. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm that just is, mm-hmm. that picture is from the outside of the greenhouse looking inside that face print is the Sasquatch pressing its face against the plastic on the inside yeah looking to see if the coast is clear whoa it's it's a perfect it absolutely you can see the lips if you blow it up you can see the hair Mm -hmm. follicles coming out of the head i mean it's like you might as well be looking at one well and and just to go back to this one real quick like this is is the uh door is that a standard size door that i'm that i'm seeing there that door is probably, because I've been there, uh, that is probably a 30 to 32 inch door. Now, okay. when they first moved out there, they knew somebody was stealing their food. They, they could tell that, you know, the food's missing. Right, right. Uh, but it's kind of a an area where people somehow, some sometimes just don't have enough money and don't have the wherewithal to pay for everything. So they'll steal it. You know, okay. it's okay. not unheard of in this area, you know? So 
oftentimes they go out there in the morning, check everything and then get start on the day's work. They see a lot of food, a lot of, you know, food was taken and eaten mm -hmm. or just gone. And they saw big, huge impressions in the grass inside these Quonset huts of something massive laying down, which turned out to be the Sasquatch after they fill themselves up so much with food, ooh, just go lay down and take a nap. And that's what they do. So, and as they, and the preacher guy I was telling you about, Tommy, preacher mm -hmm. Tommy, mm -hmm. these are his relatives. Okay. He introduced them to me. They call me when they got stuff going on. So I, I got a hotline to them, you know, and they start, suddenly realized that they started seeing them around the property, watching them work. Two or three of them would just be kind of walking through the woods and they'll kind of peek around behind a tree and watch them, you know, sawing a tree limb or, or cutting the grass, you know, or, or, or picking eggs from the chicken coop or, you know, they're just, they watch their daily life. They're completely fascinated with humans and how we live. They just don't like us a lot. So <laughs> when they figured out that it wasn't the neighbors, it was probably some other being mm -hmm. Sasquatch. That's when they put the doors on because the door, the thing was just open, you know, and they would put a sheet of plastic over it during the winter, but only a piece of plastic uh, while the heaters were running. They run all night, you know, and so they realized, well, that plastic wouldn't stop in anybody. So they put the door up. So okay. now where this face print comes from, uh, one night motion lights went off, woke up the kid. Now the kid, he's about 21, 22. He's the one that kind of takes care of most of the stuff. And he deals with the Sasquatch mostly, although mm -hmm. the rest of the family has seen him. So the lights go on. He's going, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm going out. So he grabs his phone with his flashlight on the phone. He runs out after that motion lights go on to light up the whole area, woke him up. He's running toward the, uh, the greenhouse. As soon as he gets outside his door of the house, he hears this unbelievable Sasquatch roar off to the left in the woods. He's about halfway to the greenhouse. He hears another loud Sasquatch roar off to the right. Right as he's getting there, he hears a scream from inside the greenhouse. Uh -huh. He opens the door and this Sasquatch runs right by him. They, they brush. He could have kissed it. It was that close. <laughs> it brushed up against him. Whoa, whoa. And it was, you know, sometimes I get teary when I tell these stories because they're so, yeah. you know, emotionally uh, draining to everybody. When I'm hearing them, I'm, I'm, I'm really just, you know, getting emotional from happiness, you know. But mm -hmm. it brushed up against him. And he said, that's the one, that's the juvenile. You could tell because it wasn't, they're, they're not filled out yet. You know, they're, they're kind of tall and scrawny. You know, then they, uh, at some point, you know, I mean, everybody's, you know, uh, body type is different. So you're going to, you know, bulk up as you get older, get fat, get skinny, whatever. So, but this one was really tall and skinny, but it ran right by him. And they've seen him multiple times since, and they're still going in and out and they have an agreement. You quit taking my stuff. Yeah. Their favorite food when he first discovered it was, uh, strawberries and eating the tops off of radishes when oh. they discovered that they were in there and they put the door on the food they really were liking a lot was eggplant hmm. that's something that doesn't grow in the wild and sasquatch yeah, yeah. they love the eggplant i mean that's just a big juicy gourd you know of course they just pop that in the mouth and swallow it whole almost so <laughs> but, so they still <laughs> take food, but they have an agreement. Yeah. We feed How... our family. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, you're good. Uh... Go ahead. I was just curious, like how, how you might've said this, how long has this situation been taking place for this family? Three or four years three that they're aware years. of. They weren't oh. really paying attention, but three other family groups of the same family tree live within a mile of each other. So when they okay. called me out, when this event happened with the, the Sasquatch with the hand and all that, mm -hmm. uh, I met nine family members and you talk about chaos. 
they all pulled out their flip phones, their phones, their laptops. They all got photos of Sasquatch and doing this, that. I mean, I was like, I'm, I'm in heaven. <laughs> you know, I've got, I've got all these people pulling out Sasquatch. Oh, look, look, mine's clear. No, it's the same one, but look, look at mine. Mine's better. I mean, they oh, were just wow. like little kids because they had someone to talk to who wasn't going to eradicate their dreams and, and stories, you know? Yeah. Of course, I brought them a, a box full of books, all, all my books. I brought them a book because they're all Tommy's family. And, uh, and but it, it would just, you know, I, I hadn't written the third one yet. And uh, this one here, yeah. and that's the one that, that, that those pictures I just, you just showed, that's, these are in this book. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, but they told me all kinds of stories. Now there's one uh, one photo I didn't send you, and I'm gonna show it to you. You probably can't see it. When I was there, uh, their cat, one of their cats died. Oh, in yeah, the, the, little, the little grave there. I could see it. The little yep. grave. Well, mm -hmm. two or three days after that grave was put in, mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, the tops of turnip greens were pulled off the plants and hung on the cross. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What? Oh, I, I, I've got a. I'm, you probably got the story in the first book about the the dog. About that was the married. dog. Yeah, yeah. They pull the, uh, you know, they pull the uh, flowers out because they don't mark their graves. I do believe they bury their dead when possible. Uh, if they're not, you know, if they happen to be in this portal, this dimension, mm -hmm. you know. So they, uh, they, uh, yeah, because, uh, so you, you have investigated, let's talk about burial for just a second. Yeah. Is the thought here, they will bury them if they have to on, uh, in, in our, I, I don't know what to call it in our plane. Otherwise they yeah. take them out. Yeah. Well, here's my thing. Uh, they're physical beings like you and I, uh -huh. well, let's just say I'm psychic. Right. And so I'm physical, but I can access if I'm a medium, I can access other vibrations and mm -hmm. bring them in to you and tell you about your mother who passed mm -hmm. or your, your brother or your aunt, or I could, I could tell you something that I should not know, but I know because I've plugged into your vibration. Right. That's how they work. So I, I believe they can and do bury their dead, but I mean, I'm talking about you're moving a one or two ton boulder digging a hole, throwing a body down there and putting that back on that hole. And there's no human going to walk up to a two or three ton boulder in the middle of the woods, even think there's a body into there, much less move it for whatever reason. Okay. So okay. they put them where we can't find them. They caves, you know, they may do, there was a report just came out. Uh, it was not a report. It was a video, but uh, somebody reported uh, seeing three Sasquatches perhaps doing a burial service because there were certain grunts and groans done mm -hmm. and they saw them bury something. Okay. And when they went back to check it out the next day, it had been dug up and it was gone because oh. they will move bodies. If they know that you have seen a burial, there's a lot of reports of it, but most people won't even talk about it. a lot of it's the habituation people and they have those kind of reports. They mm -hmm. won't talk about it because they don't want people coming out there and digging them up. They respect each other. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're sharing your reality that you actually exist with me. Mm -hmm. I'm not about to go turn you in, mm -hmm. you know, even though there's millions of dollars potentially at stake. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and do you think if, if this is the case um, that they are doing this, they're, they're, they're highly aware of where they are burying them there, there's high intelligence involved with this. They move them. Uh, what are the chances that we will ever find that, you know, ever important body to, to, to bring it into the mainstream here? Somebody already knows and, you know, uh, the government knows Mm -hmm. uh, the tree and lumber companies are aware of this because in my second book, I've got a great story about that, about a planting crew running into Sasquatch. And then the, uh, lumber company and tree planting people said, you say nothing. You'll never work in this town ever. You say nothing about okay. what you saw. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they know, you know, and they, you know, there's, there's stories about military going out on uh, military bases, uh, high security bases with the, you know, uh, you know, 
warheads mm -hmm. and the Sasquatch are on the property, hunting them, sometimes killing or, or at least running them off. There's all kinds of stories. Huh. And you, you, you just can't say no to hardly any of this, you know, yeah, yeah. I've got, a, I've got stuff I could show you now to curl your hair, but I can't show it because, you know, it was given to me with the promise that I'm not going to show anybody, you know, right. I might show it, but I'll never, ever share it electronically, Yeah. you know, because and it, you look at it and you're going, oh, well, I can quit wondering about that because that looks like a Sasquatch <laughs> to me, you know, you know, yeah. in, in this here, I'll throw up a still of it here. People can. Yeah. There we go. There we got three. And that's another family. Mm -hmm. Now, this property. Um, can you pop it back up? Do you want the cover of the book or the picture? Uh, of... Do the do the picture. Uh, do okay. uh, can you put the two separate? Pic okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, so I'm showing I'm showing this. Mm -hmm. So. On this, they don't live on this land. This is about 25, 30 acres. It's hunting property. It's all it is. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to re reveal the state, but take a close look. You see the shadow going behind the, this is the preacher. This is the town preacher here. He doesn't own the property. He, he's allowed to hunt it to help feed his family because preachers don't make much in the you know, little towns. Mm -hmm. So you see the triangular shadow going behind him. Yep. You see the tree, the horizontal felled tree that's behind him. Mm -hmm. uh, that dark thing in the uh, right back there, uh, everyone says, that's, that's a Sasquatch. Well, it's not a Sasquatch. It's a, uh, it's a tree blind. It's a ground blind. Oh, okay. I, I didn't even notice that before when I was looking well, at it. Yeah. See, uh, but, but glad you pointed it out. That, well, that's got to be a Sasquatch. I see it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not. No, I'll tell you what it is. I, I could have made it more exciting, but I'm not going to tell you the truth. <laughs> You know, and to the right of that is a little uh, corn feeder. You know, the corn feeders the hunters use to, you know, disperse. You know, yeah. they have it set up and it'll automatically throw corn out. So you get the deer mm -hmm. and they get their shots, you know, their photos. So on this day, he wasn't, he had his gun with him, but he wasn't hunting. Uh, about every couple of months, they go out and change all the batteries. They got about 32 cameras, 33 cameras in this one area. They go out and change the batteries, get the SD cards out, swap out the SD cards, mm -hmm. uh, take the other SD cards back home, get all the photos off so they can see, you know, where the hunting is if they move to one area or another. So that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So look closely at the timestamp. What time does that say? Oh, okay. Uh, 15, 12, 36. Yeah, that's 3, 12, 36 seconds, mm -hmm. it's 312 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. The year is wrong. Uh, you know, you got all those cameras, you're not going to reset the date. You know, nobody cares about that. You right. Know? right. But the time, you know, they, they just want to know what the time they're showing up. So you got all that in your head. Mm -hmm. Now, pull the hand up. Okay. You're so good at that. Look at that. <laughs> I'm Whoa. too good sometimes. Pull well, things up too early. Yeah. Okay. So now, you see the shadow, it's not quite as pronounced, but it's still basically there, right under the handprint. Right, right. Okay. You see that tree, horizontal tree that was down behind the other one. Of course, mm -hmm. you can't see the part where it's kind of going up because the hand's blocking it. You see the trees in the upper right, they're all moving. Kind of to blur, the blurry, yeah, yeah. It's because it bumped the camera. Look at the time. On this one, tell me what time it is. Three twelve forty. Four seconds. Huh. Four seconds. Huh. It's the same day, same location. Yeah. This being showed up four seconds after the preacher tripped the camera. He never saw it. He never sensed it. He never heard it. My theory, unless it's incredibly stealthy, which is entirely possible. Mm -hmm. is that it materialized and bumped the camera. It landed when it came into a physical form. It landed virtually on top of the camera. That's why the camera's blurred. It looks like it's moving. Uh, the shadowing is different because, um, because it's bumped. 
Okay. Can I, uh, can I clarify something though? I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, so with, yeah. with the, with trail cams, I'm, I'm not as familiar with trail cams and how they work. I know they, they work on sensors. They'll snap the photo and, and then they'll snap a photo after, but like, what's the span of time? Are, are they on a timer? Do they just go snap, 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 snap? Or is it, it like. It depends on how you set them. Oh, okay. You know, this okay. one it was obviously motion triggered. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, and a lot of time you can you can put it on burst. So if it gets tripped, it'll take anywhere from four to ten photos, like okay. you were doing. Click, click, okay. click, 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 click. Yeah. This one, and it's so close, it's blurry. I mean, right, it's right. on top of the camera. It bumped the camera, is my theory, and I'll firmly go to my grave with that theory. It bumped the camera. And whether it was physically there and he just missed it. Mm-hmm. He's the town preacher. He has seen other Sasquatch on the property. So is the property owner. That's why they call me out there. Mm-hmm. In fact, I got called out there. I, the reason I met them is because uh, they called me and sent me that photo. I said, I'm packing my stuff and I'm on the way. I'm, I'm coming to see you right quick. Yeah. But about a week before... I got out there, a producer buddy of mine in Florida called me and said, Hey, uh, I can't remember who it was. If it was science channel or somebody, they wanted to do a story on one of my published BFRO reports. Mm-hmm. And cause it had, a, it was habituation and they had a lot of sightings and some really interesting, very interesting stuff. And I've, I've known these people for a while, about three or four years. So I called him up and told him, I said, Hey, uh, these people might want to come out and film a little thing on your, on your sighting and your stories. Well, we want uh, money. We want, I mean, they just went bizarre on me. They started demanding money and gifts and clothing to be wearing for shooting the video and, uh-huh. And I said, you know, guys, that's not how it works. I mean, they just <laughs> like your story and, you know, uh, they just want to come out and interview you and you, know, you won't be on camera. You'll be, have your back to the camera because they didn't want their faces on. So they'll, they'll feel me from behind, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, they just got real obnoxious. And so, uh, I called my guy back and I said, Hey, I don't know what's going on with these people. But I found out later why somebody else wanted to film one of their events. Oh, okay. And they, they promised them this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And so, and they didn't get what they were promised. I found out later as well. So I called him and said, Hey, they don't want to do it. Oh, this is what they want. He said, well, screw that. I said, but I just happened to have gotten this photo and this report just a few days before you call me. Same state, not that far. What a weird coincidence. Yeah. And I'm going to send you this photo. I want, cause I had not time. I had had not, I've not had time to check it as best as I could to see if it had been tampered with. Cause that was a mm-hmm. fake photo, mm-hmm. the hand, the hand photo. So I said, have your camera people take a look at that and see if it's been tampered with. Cause I have program. You can have programs where you can see if things have been uh, pixelated or, or tampered with. You can, sure. you can tell if somebody's tried to, ja- you know, uh, jack you around. Mm-hmm. So I just hadn't got to that yet. Cause it was so new as well. I got other things, but I'll, I'll look anyway. They called me back about an hour later and said, we're on our way. Wow. Sold. Sold. It was yeah. real. Now, yeah. the, video, the the show we were going to do, I think it was actually for Hulu. And because of bickering between the producer and uh, another producer, it was all filmed mm-hmm. and nothing was done with it ever. Oh, no. Yeah, it was just, it was so sad. And, and you could tell when we were there these people were not getting along with one another, you know, artistic yeah, no. differences, you know, the guy who was given the head work was the employee of the woman he replaced and she was still out there. And so they were just mm-hmm. button heads and, you know, it was just, you know, if you, it, it was just nasty. So was, it, it never happened, but yeah, you know, I went out to that property twice. And, the, you know, the, the, the preacher has seen other, a paranormal event that happened out there. You probably like this. Okay. Uh, he was out there hunting by himself one day 
he saw a couple of deer on the ground in this little uh, open area under a bank of trees. And he, he, he and they didn't move. And he was looking there. He was at him. He could have taken one. He but they didn't move. He was going, well, that's weird. And then he saw an elk walk by behind the deer. They didn't look around. To eat. It's like they expected it. It had jagged saw-like teeth. What in the mouth. world? Yeah. And then to top it off, while he was still standing there watching all this, this little black and white Shih Tzu dog appears and <laughs> walks into this clearing in front of the deer. So he's looking at all this and he suddenly realized that this was satanic. This was evil. He knew that the devil was testing his faith. This was the, that's okay. in the book. Which, was, which book? Uh, it's in the third one here. I put, one. That, okay. I put that entire story in the book. Okay. Because he said, this was Satan testing my faith in God. And he immediately read Bible verse. And I've got pictures of him uh, reading Bible verse to some of the crew when we were filming. Mm-hmm. And they were devout Christians. And they, they all sat and prayed together. So he knows the difference between the Sasquatch mm-hmm. and people saying, well, it's demonic. It's the Nephilim. You hear that analogy every now and then. Right. He knew the difference. He knew his faith was being tested. And the thing that got him was the Shih Tzu. I said, well, preacher, where, where'd that dog come from? What, what's the deal with the dog? He says, you know, Carter, I don't know. Oh, wait. While we're on the phone, he goes, oh, my God, my daughter has a Shih Tzu. His <laughs> daughter, who lives in another area in the same state, mm-hmm. he, she has that Shih Tzu. That was a vision. That dog was not really, it was there, but it wasn't there, you know? Yeah. It was shown to him as a test of his faith, because he and he started reading from the Bible and denouncing all of these visions, and phew, they just disappeared. Huh. So I rarely get into religion. You yeah, know, yeah. But this was such a classic. It's... And who better to tell the story than the town preacher? Right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, yeah, you're 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 right when you say you talk. You're talking to everyday He's people. Logical. Yeah, yeah. He's a preacher. Like that would be a strange thing to 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 lie about or to exaggerate or i mean it's it it might be a strange story to a lot of folks because there's a lot happening there um and and all of it is kind of unexplainable but at the same hand look who's telling the story you know they're yeah yeah and see that's where i got when i released the cover of this book i got Mm -hmm. people dumping on me all all the haters and trolls came out of the woodwork you know They're, they're still reproducing even though you think they're not they're still reproducing you know and so they said, how dare you publish something like that? That's fake. That's phony. You know, and the thing in Sasquatch world and probably in the paranormal world too, mm-hmm. if the photo's too good, it's got to be a fake. Yeah. If it's blurry, yeah. well, of course it's blurry because there's nothing there. Yeah. You can't win, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I've got but- a bunch of grief for that, but they have had other, he knew the difference, you know? And mm-hmm. when I asked him, uh, after I got this, even though the camera guys uh, told me that's legit, we we see no signs of tampering. I asked him. I got to ask this because I ask everybody, including that face I showed you, mm-hmm. is this the real deal? And he said, Carter, it's real. Don't ask me that ever again. Wow. Yeah. And of course, then people, when I tell that story, they go, well. Preachers lie all the time. Look at this Joel Olstein guy. He's just robbing people blind so he can have his, you know, $14 million house. Yeah. You know, he's just, he's just taking money left and right. He doesn't care. He's going to lie all day long. Mm-hmm. So that's their analogy of my guy saying it's real. Mm-hmm. That's how they fight back with that. So you can't win when you have stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. uh, yeah, when it, when it's too good, 
Okay, you know, it's okay. If if it's real, go get a photo, go get a video. Okay, you go get it and it's actually good. No, that's too good. No, yeah. no, that that's absolutely 100% been tampered with, can't be. And that's, yeah, it, it, it is the same in the paranormal world as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you and this is paranormal, it. but it's you know, yeah, yeah. You know, um, so, so some some big footers might argue with that, uh, but yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's above you know, normal, it's not, it's not our normal, yeah. Uh, but wow, thank Carter, thank you, thank you for, for sharing these stories, thank you for sharing your experience. Um, I, we are running over time. I, I usually don't go this long, but I, I still want to do our, our final segment together. I'm going to have to have you back. Cause I was going to ask you about tree structures and get deeper into the language and just, you'll have to just pull the plug to shut me up. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You know what? I love it. I love to just listen. That is my favorite guest um but yes yeah, so let's uh let's go ahead and shift gears down though we're going to go into the final segments so i can okay. let you get on with your day uh so we are at final questions final thoughts and then we will close it up uh first question for you because you talk to so many people you get so many stories and reports um i i'm willing to bet you got to kind of filter sometimes okay. how do you how do you best differentiate between a real experiencer and somebody just pulling your leg? Well, you know, lies are hard to remember. So if they're packing you full of mud and they are just telling you stuff, uh, I hate to give away my secret, but you can ask them the same question several different ways uh -huh. and at different times. If those answers aren't the same, you're full of crap. I mean, it's oh. just flat out it you know yeah if you and i are talking and you tell me uh, three different versions of a car wreck mm -hmm. or something you know a liar has to remember a truth teller never has to remember because they only have one story to tell you right right and inevitably i'd say 85 90 percent of the time unless someone is so upset with what they saw mm -hmm. that he just can't get it straight but as a rule, you know, uh, you know, I've smelled several rats and, you know, I don't embarrass them or anything. I'll just say, well, I appreciate your time. And listen, I'll see if it makes the book. Yeah, I appreciate your time. And if it does, I'll send you a copy. And I, I end the conversation. You know, I've had a couple of people just get really mean and hateful because they knew I, I was on to them. Hmm. And then it got real ugly, but that's okay. Uh, if you want to be ugly, I'll be ugly second, not first. I'll be ugly <laughs> back at you, but I won't, I won't be the first one. You know, I was trying to be nice about it, but you want to be... Not nice. So yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. And I'm not a hoaxer. You know, I. You know, that's the whole thing wrong with this. You know, there's so many hoaxers, mm -hmm. and they've all been outed, and people still follow them because the people that they fooled are long gone, and there's a whole new batch of people coming in. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I'm not going to name the hoaxers because that's you know that's their cross to bear. And, yeah. Uh, maybe one or two of them are not hoaxing, but they're just really bad storytellers who don't keep track of their evidence. I, I mm -hmm. don't know, but. No, I've, I've, I've got a, a, ooh, a special place in my heart for some hoaxers. Um, I, yeah. I am aware of, yeah, a, a bunch, yeah. especially in this field. And it just irks me to no end that, you know, the, the preying on people's willingness to believe so much that they yeah. don't necessarily stop and question it. And I just, oh, I can't stand that. But yeah, people yeah. want to believe so bad. Yeah. If they just yeah. walk, you know, glom onto anything. Absolutely. You know? Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Look at that. You know? And I'm going, God, I've seen that picture five years ago and it's a, it's a phony, it's a fake, right. but it's, it's making the rounds. They all keep making the rounds. You know, what doesn't make the rounds, my pictures, <laughs> you know, because, <laughs> because, well, they're the real deal, whether you yeah. like it or not, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Very cool. All right. Uh, second question. So we, we didn't really talk about this much or touch on it during the, uh, the thing, but I, I still want your thoughts on this. Um, there's a, a little bit of a darker side that you hear about Sasquatch, um, in regards to, uh, pet dogs and, uh, them hurting them or killing them. I, okay. I've come across multiple stories like that. They don't um, like dogs. They don't like dogs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That was part of my question. Is it true? Uh, why do they do it? And what can we do about it? I mean, my dogs are my family. Yeah. Well, don't send your, you know, it, 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 a lot of this happens when 
people are out in the woods, they got their dogs with them. Yeah. Off a leash. Mm -hmm. They hear or see something or smell. And if they don't run for cover, half the time the dogs are scared to death and they know there's an alpha predator. They don't know who that is, but they ain't going to mess with it. Yeah. The other half, hunting dogs, they go run after whatever's out there because that's their job. That's their skill. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hunt and point to the to the animal so you can feed the family, Mr. Owner. And you hear yelping and screaming and then silence. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, and, and, and so they don't seek dogs out, but if dogs are yip yippy dog ankle biters or just, you know, they're calling attention to you, the Sasquatch, mm -hmm. uh, they'll either run them off or, and on some occasion they, they kill them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's, that's it, you know, uh, because they don't want to be found. Yeah. You know, so if this yelping little blue healer dog or a little cockapoo is running after this Sasquatch, it ain't going to end good. Okay. All it, right. It, they, I, I, I will stand by. They do not just come into your property to, to kill. Like take them or kill them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They kill for food yeah. or preservation. Okay. All right. So it's on us people. Keep your dog on a leash. Get them some yeah. training. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. All right. And final question for you. Um, because you run into this uh, a lot. What uh, what can those of us that are open minded to this subject, what can we personally do to lessen the stigma? Well, if you have a web page or you're in the like you're in the business, the paranormal you know, mm -hmm. podcast business, mm -hmm. you can state just state your opinion. Mm -hmm. Whether it's on a web page where it's just typed in and someone can read it regarding Sasquatch. I'm of the belief that, and just put it out there. And my whole thing, because, you know, people are being transformed daily from apers to paranormal. Mm -hmm. And so if you just put that out there and you can also say things like, you know, have an open mind. You don't have to believe Carter, all the things he just said, just consider them yeah. and do other research. If you're interested, do other research that parallels the paranormal or quantum aspects and see if, if you have an open mind, you know, an open mind doesn't mean you believe it. It just means you consider it. Mm -hmm. I think I put that in one of the books, like yeah, uh, yeah. 25 times. You know, it's just like, it's my broccoli. It's my Brussels sprouts theory. You know, you go to somebody's house and they feed you, you know, Brussels sprouts. You, you hate Brussels sprouts, but you don't want to insult the, uh, the, the host. So you kind of spread them around on your plate and <laughs> take a partial bite and, you know, spread them around. It looks like you've been eating them, but you really haven't. So you don't hurt their feelings. So you can do, do that. Just consider it. And nobody has to know you're considering any of this, you know, but we're not going to get anywhere if everyone keeps being so hateful, because you can have, you know, you and I could be totally on opposite ends of the spectrum, but we're having a respectful conversation. You say, well, I've just never seen that. I just can't grasp that. I said, well, one day, Kristen, you will. One day yeah. you will, because one day you'll have, if you're out in the woods enough, or even at home, you'll have an event that makes you question, Yeah. you know, or somebody you know and love and believe deeply tells you they saw one and it just vanished, you, you know, or it spoke to me in my dreams. Yeah. And that kind of stuff happens. You know, I have them disappearing from physical form into orbs and appearing in physical form from an orb. Usually they're blue. I have a great story with my wife in a blue orb. Hmm. And, uh, but that'll have to be for, my, for another show. That's this book. Okay. That is number two. Yeah. And, yeah. and that is just, a, it's an awesome story. It's a lot of times when I tell that when I start, you know, getting all teary eyed, cause it's like, an, it was the moment I made contact with awesome. these beings and they contacted me. They contacted my wife 
at the time they contacted me, they contacted her with a blue orb flying around our bedroom. And I was still over uh, in Illinois leading an expedition. Whoa. whoa. Yeah. It, it's, it's one of those stories that it, it gets you. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. I'm making, it, was, I'm it, was, that. it was the moment that the, I have to tell the, the whole story, to, to, but it's like, it blows your mind. It blew my mind, you know? Okay. All right. I'm, I'm right. I wrote down blue orb story. I'm going to ask you about that next time. Yeah. Well, it's in the second book. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, well, just I'll probably read that before I talk to you, but yeah, still. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you know, just, I don't know how often you have your guests on, but I'd love to have, you know, be back. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. No, any, any time. Yeah. Let, let's catch up in the new year. I would love that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> late January, part of February, yeah. probably be pretty good, but you know, uh, whatever, whatever you got open, you know, I work from home. So yeah. I still, you know, I'm a real estate agent. I still do stuff, but not yeah. much. I'm about to retire. So I still oh. you, you can see all my, you know, footprints and handprints on the wall. So yeah, I'll, 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 yeah. Kind of deep oh. in this stuff, you know. Yeah, I was I was looking at the one on the right. That's the one um that's on the on the on the greenhouse, the plastic, right? That, that no, looks familiar. no, that's from one yeah. of my witnesses uh, uh here in uh Kansas City. It wasn't this guy? No, oh, that so was similar. that was that was the kid who had the Sasquatch run by him and brush him. Right. Okay. okay. That handprint's on the inside. He okay. put, I told him to go back out and take a picture before the uh, moisture erased it of his hand. And that's uh, his hand is seven and a half inches from the tip of his uh, palm to the tip of the middle finger. And that, yeah. that is about 11 inches. That hand prints about 11 inches. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, uh, yeah. Well, before we wrap here, uh, why don't you let my audience know? where they can find you on where you want to send them online and also where they can grab copies of the books. Okay. I have a website. It's pr pretty easy. It's sqexplorer.com. Okay. sqexplorer.com. You can order my books right now. I'm selling all three for 50 bucks and I'm going to eat the shipping because it's Christmas. You know, uh, my email is sqexplorer at gmail.com. I'm pretty creative, aren't I? That <laughs> <SQ thing. laughs> you know, you know oh, what? kind of a ring to it. I think I'll keep it. You know? but, <laughs> so, but that's how you get a hold of me. And I, I return emails. If you got something to tell me, you got a story, you got, you, you, you know, you've got something you got to tell somebody that nobody will listen to you. I'm the one I listen, you know, just don't, don't call and try to fake me out because I'm too old and, you know, crotchety for that. I, I'll figure it out pretty quick, you know, so. <laughs> I'll sniff you out. All That's right, right baby. Uh, Carter, would uh, you like to leave us with any final thoughts, words of wisdom, or a piece of advice? Well, like like I just said, if the paranormal quantum thing is just too much for you, just look into it a little bit. Buy one of my books or anybody else's book, Ron, Ron Moorhead's book. There's a lot of good books out there, but look into the questions that you cannot answer from an ape only position and see if you find answers. You may not like them. They may like ruffle your feathers. Well, that can't be, you know, I, I, I was brought up, you know, in a different way. I, that just can't be. Well, it can be, you know, we're on the freaking moon. We're, we're, we're going to Mars. You know, we're, we're acknowledging you know, UFOs in our present day lives, the Tic Tac video. We're, acknowledging all kinds of things. Yeah. So your thought process might be a little antiquated. If you're stuck there, you're stuck there. That's good. There's nothing wrong with it. If you're happy and, and the, the other end of the spectrum just doesn't interest you, that's fine. You know, just don't, just be nice to people that believe differently than you. I mean, that's really it. Sasquatch investigator, researcher, and author, Mr. Carter Bouchard. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you to Carter Bouchard for taking the time to come on the show and share your knowledge with my audience. I really look forward to having you on again, sir. My good, good people, please join me in following Mr. Bouchard online at the links that I have in the show notes. You can also find the link to his website and to buy his books down there as well. Reach out, touch base. Tell them you heard them here on the show. Share your own personal experience with Bigfoot at Carter's email, sqexplorer 
at gmail.com. We have less than a week left before the door on the listener appreciation giveaway closes. Enter to win your very own Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra by Manscaped and be blissfully smooth this new year. New year, new you, guys. There are no catches. <laughs> there aren't. Enter your name in the drawing. I will then hold the drawing and then I will send you this trimmer. The end. How do you win? It is so incredibly easy to win this giveaway, y'all. Be subbed to the PGP YouTube channel. I will check. Post a comment under any or all of my season six guest episodes. Any for one entry or as many as you like for like that many entries. Comment something that you learned from that guest or that you really especially enjoyed about them being on the show. And for goodness sakes, if you're over there, give the episode a thumbs up. You know, I, I forgot to include that as a requirement on our last episode. So it's not a requirement to be entered, but eh, come on, it's Christmas. You know how it goes. The season of goodwill and all of that. Um, last thing that you will do, this is very important. You will send me a private message just to say that you did it. If you don't send me the message, you run the risk of my accidentally missing your comment on YouTube, especially as we get more entries. I don't want that to happen, and I'm sorry. But so, you know, send me the message. But uh, that is really it. That That's all there is to it. You have until Christmas Eve at midnight to enter for this giveaway. Now, <laughs> last week... I mentioned I would share some cheat codes for you guys. I am not sharing this info on my socials. It is specifically for those who take the time to listen and watch these episodes. Here it is, Christmas Carol style. You will be visited by five extra opportunities to enter your name. Five more entries, y'all. You ready? The entry of Christmas present is happening right now. You're listening to it. Three entries of Christmas past occurred during the only live stream this show has ever done. Took place near the end of October. You might have tuned in for it. And one final entry of Christmas future is taking place this Friday keep them lips sealed guys there's five extra entries for my listening and viewing audience alone all right thank you thank you all so much for tuning in today and for tuning in every episode i sincerely appreciate you guys a special thank you to the patrons of the show because of your support I have recently been able to order a new pair of studio headphones that I have desperately been needing for quite some time because these, these old things are old <laughs> and l falling apart uh, at this point. Uh, so that needed to happen. Uh, I was also able to pick up some more research material for this season. There is so much to learn about this phenomenon, and a, a lot of that really meaty information can only be found in the expertise of the words written in a book somewhere. So I thank you, patrons. Thank you so much. You really do help keep things chugging right along over here. Everyone else, please consider becoming a patron of this show. I am going to start offering a new perk on Patreon. The breathtakingly elusive ad-free episode. Completely. None of the ads, all of the education. And you will, of course, enjoy all of the regular perks, early access, uh, special video messages from yours truly, announcements and developments, sometimes months beforehand, uh, free PGP merch, and more. There, there's more. So go check it out. That is a wrap for today. 
I shall see you guys back here on Friday for a December bonus episode with Gregory Fedora of the Fedora Files. He is joining us to talk Christmas cryptids. Don't miss it. Until then, stay safe, keep the nightlight on, and sleep with one eye open.